احمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم و علی علیہ و صحابہ و ذریت اجمعین قال اللہ تعالیٰ یا ایہ الناس کلو مما فی الارض حلالا طیبا ولا تتبعو خطوات الشیطان انہو لکم عدو مبین صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و اسر لی امری وحل اقدتا من لسانی افقہ قولی وجعل وزیرا من اہلی آمین رب العالمین سبحانک لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انکا انت العلیم الحکیم I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who is without any partners and I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family, his companions and on all those people who will be, who er, who are and who will be following the path of righteousness. I just recited the surah, the ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 168, which says that, O mankind, ya yuhan nas, eat from whatever is on the earth with two conditions, that is lawful and good. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا كُتَوَةِ shaitan That do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُمٌ مُبِينٌ Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. Shaykhwan Muslimin, we all know. And there is of course no hidden, hidden agenda or hidden fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the provider of everything. And provider of everyone. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at another place, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا That there is no creature on earth but that upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is its provision. So let it be any living being from plants to animals, different kind of plants, different kind of animals, birds, insects, whatever it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides risk. According to the narration of Hiliyat al-Awliya, which is classified as Hassan by Shaykh Almani rahmahullah, that were the son of Adam to flee from his provision as he flees from death, means if a person would run away, as he runs away from his death, his provision, provision is risk, sustenance, his provision would surely reach him as death will reach him, subhanallah. Like a person cannot escape death, same way, I mean, the way the death follows the person, same way the risk follows the person. So which means, Yaqwal Muslimin, and what is risk? Yeah, let's talk about that as well. Risk means, or risk, the word en en encompasses our faith, starts with the, starting with our faith, spirituality, our time, our health, our wealth, family, intellect, everything we have. That is our risk. And... It also includes that can help us fulfill our duties and obligations to serve and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in other words, the risk is something which everybody is going to get, one way or the other. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with instructions that what we should do. See, very first thing what we need to understand is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing us with what we have, let it be our health, our family, our children, our deen, whatever. We must understand that these are the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look around us, just here, if you look around us, we'll see different people who are earning through different sources and who are earning in different statuses. Somebody have less, somebody have more. If somebody has less, it does not mean that he is less favored. And if somebody has more, it does not mean he is more favored. But we should look at it in this way, that whatever we have is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we have is not because I deserved it. It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose me for that. Because if you look around again, we'll see there are many people who are much more qualified than us. Much more better than us. Much more probably muttaqi highest than us but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us more than them so always keep this in mind that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is his favors it is his blessings that alhamdulillah whatever we have so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whatever is on earth eat 
kulu mim ma fil ard eat from whatever is on earth of course we are not going into details that what we can eat and what we cannot eat from animals what kind of animals we can eat and you know plants and uh, what are the lawful things and unlawful things we are not going into details however allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us two condition that you can eat whatever is on the earth conditions halal and tayyiban that it should be lawful halal and tayyib tayyib means pure and good now what is halal of course we all know which is allowed in islam as per the sharia laws but just to make it easy halal in arabic word halal in arabic means permissible and technically when it comes to sharia that means lawful or permitted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the opposite word of halal is haram we all know that which means unlawful or not allowed so technically in islamic sharia it would means that all those things which are not prohibited or permitted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and what is tayyib tayyib can be divided into two parts to understand that what is tayyib see one tayyib means that is pure that is clean thing that has not become dirty stale or rotten second thing or second would be that how we earn that other uh, or we have not made that that legal thing that lawful thing forbidden by for ourselves by our actions for example we all know lamb chicken goat or other animals which we are allowed to eat are halal in general they are halal same goes for the vegetables for different soups for different lentils and stuff however what if somebody would steal a chicken then what would happen the chicken is still itself halal it's not pure anymore so it does not fall under the category of pure what if somebody have a chicken earned it halal but does not slaughter it properly then it is not tayyib anymore it is not allowed for us to eat anymore what if somebody slaughters a lamb or a goat for someone other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again that thing would not be considered pure would not be considered halal we are not allowed to eat that that means being halal is one thing and for thing to be tayyib is something else this is how we need to understand there is a narration of muslim prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says and this by the way this goes for everything the our earnings whatever we are earning everything goes into that uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says inna allah tayyiban indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure la yaqbalu illa tayyiban and he does not accept or he only accepts what is pure Shaykh al Muslimin, when we are out working hard, trying to earn our livelihood for ourselves, for our children, for others, then we do charity, we give zakah, we go for Hajj and Umrah from the same livelihood. If it is not tayyib, if it is not tayyib, then what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "La yaqbalu illa tayyiban." Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala does not accept what is pure. this also negates the concept where people think that if i am earning i don't care from where i am earning i would just give a certain number or a amount or certain percentage of my earning in charity and it will become fine everything becomes halal it does not work that in islam it does not work like that in islam because you allah subhanahu wa taala has not made it mandatory on you to do that you are supposed to do your duties what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed on you if you can help someone alhamdulillah rabbil alamin from what you have alhamdulillah rabbil alamin if you don't you don't if you can't you can't if you don't have you don't have pray ya khan muslimin make dua may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you to help the person or may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the person straight do not cross the boundaries this is what the shaitan wants he wants us to think that we are doing something good but in actual we are doing something which is forbidden by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ya khwal muslimin when a person indulges into haram 
And one more thing I'd like to say before I read, the, read this hadith to you. The very first, the very, very, very first trap of shaitan or the whole uh, thing what shaitan wants to do that he wants a person to indulge into haram. Because once a person gets indulged into haram, indulge into haram, haram starts going in, then all the things starts getting multiplied by zero. How? Narration of Muslim. Prophet Muhammad mentions a case of a man that who have come from a far place. His hair is all messy. His clothes are all dirty. Then he spreads out his hand like this or like this. And he says, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. Means he's supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's making dua. In some of the narration, it says that he is in Kaaba. So imagine a person from USA or Canada, like right on the other side of the world, has gone to do Umrah or Hajj. And it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. You spend a lot of money from this part of the world to go to Umrah or Hajj. It's not cheap. I mean, you're talking about thousands of dollars. And a person reaches there, spreads out his hand. Kaaba is in front of him or her. And he says, Ya Rab, help me. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. And what Prophet Muhammad says, none of his supplications will be accepted. None will be accepted. Companions ask, why? What did he say? Mat'amuhu haram. What he ate or what was his food is haram. Wa mashrabuhu haram. What he drinks is haram. Wa malbasuhu haram. His clothing is haram. Wa ghuziyya bil haram. And he has been nourished with haram. Fa anna yustajabu lahu. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered his supplication. Allah manna kafu wa kareem wa tahfir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ya Khan Muslim, somebody is working for 12, 13, 14 hours. And in this country, it's not easy. It's not easy here. People work. I mean, they work hard. We all know that. You pay taxes. You do a lot of things. Of course, it's not easy. But imagine everything getting multiplied by zero. Multiplied by zero. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not answering our supplications, what is there? What else is there? So Ya Khan Muslim, that is why. Eat whatever is on the earth or whatever is allowed or whatever you have to eat. Halalam tayyiban. It has to be halal. It has to be pure. And if somebody is not doing that, then what? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala khutuwati shaitan. Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Means the very first thing. If a person is not fulfilling the condition of his livelihood to be halal and tayyib, he is following the footsteps of shaitan. And footsteps of shaitan, footsteps of shaitan would end up that person into hell, jahannam of course. Yaqal Muslimin, how does shaitan work? Very first thing, do not take shaitan as something easy or light. He is a very powerful being. Don't forget that he got out of our father Adam salam from paradise, from Jannah. Only one thing was not allowed for him to eat, Adam salam, And he made sure that he do that. Just one thing out of the whole Jannah, just one thing. So you don't think that he's weak. You don't think that he don't know. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows how, he, how we think. He would present the falsehood, the haram wrapped in haq, in truth. And we can never be able to identify the haram or the batil if we don't know what is haq. 
if we have not learned what is truth, how does he start? We all know that. He would come and start whispering. This is happening, that is happening. You don't have this, you don't have that. Look at him, look at her. What is this, what is that, blah, blah. With the whispers, doubts would start coming in. Is this really right what I'm doing? Why, why don't I do this and then it will result into this? Why, should I, why shouldn't I go for this? Because somebody else have this as well. If he can wear a three, four hundred dollar shoes, why, why can't I? If he has got an expensive car, why I don't have one? Or whatever it is. Then, to get to those things, person would start lying. Cheating. Deceptions. And then, Shaitan would put in the false hopes, promises, or whatever is it. Oh, don't worry. Everybody is doing the same. You're not the only one. You see, look at Mr. X. Look at that Miss Y. Look at that lady, how she wears the clothes. So, you know, you can do the same. Come on, show your body. It will make you look beautiful. Come on, show you whatever you have, your wealth. It will make you look respectful. And then... It starts with the negligence of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, a person would make things halal for himself. He would become a self-imposed mufti, the person who passes out the verdicts. And he would make things halal for himself, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. And this is the first form of shirk. Because the law providers are only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If anybody would do that, without any doubt, he's committing a shirk. When this ayah was revealed in Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people of the book have taken their scholars as their rub. So there was a companion over there. Who has reverted from the Christianity or from Judaism? I'm not sure. I think it was from Judaism, not Christianity. Adi ibn Hatim. So he said, uh, Ya Rasulullah Wasallam, we never did that. We never took our scholars or our valis as rub. So Prophet Wasallam said, they did not you used to take their halal as halal and their haram as haram. In other words, when they would permit you to eat haram, you would take it as halal? He, would, he said, yes. Then Prophet ﷺ said, what else is about taking rub? This is one of the things. So, Yafal Muslim, now we look at us. Yani over there still, they used to look at their scholars, you know, to make haram halal. Over here, we make it by ourselves. Oh, you know, I am this. I know this. My father was this. My grandfather was this. I have been doing this. No matter what you have been doing, Yaqwan Muslim, if you're not qualified, I'm using the word qualified, you do not have the power of or authority to say anything by yourself. You can quote somebody else, but do not become a self-imposed mufti. So Yaqwan Muslim, the first sign of taqwa, of piety, is that the person's livelihood is halal, person's earning is halal. If the halal would not go in, halal would not come out. Our body works like that. Our thoughts, our spirituality, our soul work like that. If you feed haram to your children, be prepared. It's going to come out. You don't think, they don't know, so what I'll feed them, it'll go long. No, it doesn't work like that. You feed them haram, and then you wait and watch. And it's going to start from your home, not from outside. And then you would see where the people, where the person would end, would end up. And it does not mean, Ya Khwan Muslimin, it does not mean they will involve will to crime. I'm not talking about crime. I'm talking about just being a human being who respects other people. I'm talking about a son or a daughter who respects his or her parents. I'm talking about just a human being as a person that how they are going to react to your children. And, of course, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out the barakah. You would have seen definitely people who earn probably $2,000 a month, which is nothing. $2,000 is nothing in this time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made those $2,000 enough for them. They would eat, they are happy, no problems, no issues. Compared to people earning $20,000 a month, they are sick, children are disobedient, problems at home, they are ashamed of their children, blah, 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 blah. I mean, etc. I can go on. This is, this is not the point. Say, so, Khwal Muslimin, a very simple rule, remember that. For everyone, adults, children, kids, youngsters, haram goes in, haram comes out. And it comes out in one of the worst forms. And then the ayah continues. Innahu lakum adubum mubeen. Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. Yekhan Muslimin, one more thing I'd like to clear over here. Normally we think shaitan is only from unseen, from jinns. That's right. He was the main one. He was the Iblis. But we have his agents in humans also. In men and women. If you're doing something good and somebody comes and says, Oh, what are you doing? This is not good. You say you're going to lose this and you're not going to get that. He's a shaitan. If somebody is taking you off the track of Islam, he's a shaitan. If somebody is taking you off the track of something good, he is a shaitan. If a sister comes into the sister and says, oh, you know what, just leave this and do that and wear this and wear that and show you this and show you that, she's a shaitan. If she's taking you off the track, if she's trying to put you in hell, she's a shaitan. So you don't think that shaitan is only unseen. No, it is he is everywhere. If it's not him, it's his agents everywhere. And as there is a famous narration of Muslim, the Prophet said, Verily, shaitan flows through the human being like flowing of the blood in our veins. This is how much control he have on us. You don't think he is weak. That is why, Ikhwan Muslimin, there are du'as prescribed. Adhkar al-sabah, adhkar al-masah. When we wake up, when we eat something, when we go to bathroom, when we come out of bathroom, when we go out of house, when we are traveling, when we are doing a lot of things, those du'as are for our protection, are for our safety, are for the safety of our children. You don't take things lighter which are prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our protection. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we are looking for some magical wands, for some magical, you know, gibberish to happen and suddenly overnight things changed. If it was really that way, then Prophet Muhammad did not have to be in Makkah for so long and kept on struggling for what he was doing. If it was only about a magical wand and things changed. Never. In next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he only orders you to evil and immorality. And to say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you do not know. Yekhwan Muslimin, the very first thing, the very first attack as I've said about of the shaitan is for the person to get rid of halal. And the very first thing happens to a person when he indulges in haram, he becomes shameless and dishonorable. Besharam or Begharat in Urdu this describes perfectly and this is the definition shameless and dishonor dishonorable he would have no shame in committing sins all the shame would go out in doing something wrong he would have no remorse if he's cheating if he's a fraud if he's stealing in a legal way of course, because illegal way he'll get caught by the police. Say, Khwal Muslimin, evil would start arising in that person sooner or later. Same for the children. And then what would happen? Innama ya'murukum. He orders you. Orders you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ya'murukum. Why would I take somebody's order? Or you? 
The Akhwan Muslim mean we only take orders from the people who are authority on us. And when person gets indulged into haram, he becomes slave of his own desires. In other words, he becomes slave of shaitan. Innama ya'murukum. Then he orders, shaitan orders, the nafs of that person orders. Bisu iwal fahsha. Fahsh, su, bad things, evils. Fahsha, to become shameless. Yaqwal Muslimin. This evil and immorality, when it comes into a person, and again, if you just look around, you don't really have to look very far. If you just look around, those people who are, when in their extreme, they have the energy, they have control over things, they act like gods, like Pharaoh, towards their family, towards their children, towards their family, friends, neighbors, whoever they can. If you just wait and watch their end, you would see. Just look around, as I always say. Probably somewhere in your family you'd find these kind of people. Do not take the effects of haram to be easy. Do not think that a person would be forgiven if he would do something which is not permissible, which is not permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when a person would become a slave of his or her own desires, what would happen? Says things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which you do not know. Self-imposed mufti. You become the scholar. You think I know everything. And yeah, al Muslimin, that person starts making things or restrictions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed for himself, for himself, for his family, without any proof. And he would start preaching the benefits of haram. He would start preaching the advantages of haram. And you would see that. You know, if you meet with that person, say, oh, see, I have this, I have this, I have this mobile, I have this house. And say, how did you do it? Oh, I did this and so and so. You look at, but brother, this is not right. He's, oh, who cares? See what I have and you don't. Life is only for once. You live only for once. Who cares? Who cares? That's right. At that time, nobody cares. And then later on, you don't only care, you regret. The great examples of all those peoples are all around us. And if you talk to them, they are big, they are full of big lies. I'll give you an example. If you talk to somebody who has come from outside of this country, most of them would answer, we were very rich back home. Oh, huge money. One of the richest families. Very educated. I did my so-and-so degree and I did my so-and-so degree. And then he would come here or somehow he has reached here. And once a person lands into this Western country, especially people who are from third world countries, now they become the scholars. They know everything. They know about politics. They know about finances. They know about running the companies. And last but not least, they know everything about Islam. Everything. And if you ask them, when was the last time you read Quran? And probably 30 years ago, if they're old enough. Or if you just ask them, everybody knows, you know, the first revelation is the Aqra Right now, ask yourself, which was the second revelation? If you know, Alhamdulillah. But if you don't, then stop calling yourself Mufti, man. Things, Ya Khwal Muslimin, I'll stop here, we don't have time, of course. Ya Khwal Muslimin, halal and haram is clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted so many things for us. Two conditions, halal and tayyib. If not, it will affect you with bisu'i wal fahsha'i wa an taqulu ala Allahi ma la ta'lamu.
it will affect you your family your friends people who are connected everybody and the least the least effect of that would be a person a person would always be stressed he can never enjoy even his food this is the minimum i'm telling you he cannot enjoy being his with his family he cannot even enjoy this water allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take it away from him may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the greatness of the halal may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people who do their best possible uh, who have the best possible intentions to do the best possible good deeds inshallah these are all the reminders what i have said they are not the fatwas so whatever is good in this is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if there is something wrong a mistake that is because of my weakness may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives me inshallah so just few reminders jazakum allah khair everybody you came for the juma khutbah for the prayer may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you bless your family bless your job your businesses your feedback is always welcome please please feel free to let me know i'm always open to the feedback so i can improve myself today is friday please don't forget to reach surah kaf we have time until before maghrib ya khan muslimin quran is medicine of soul quran is advice quran is guidance quran is cure and mercy however these all things would only apply if we know what we are reading so please make it a habit to read quran with translation even if it is to i respect the masjid it's a sacred place it's a public it's a, it's a community place so we all must respect that and ya khwan muslimin respect means that we all know that it's a no smoking place people would go out and they would start smoking honestly honest question if you are in a parking of a mall and it says no smoking would you smoke nobody would dare to smoke but when they come to masjid they don't care even if they are parking wrong they don't care if they have to say something wrong they don't this is this is just a small comparison about how much we respect the place of worship not only here i'm talking in general this is just because i'm here right now but any period ago so please ya khan muslimin respect means everything it's not only in this hall alhamdulillah in this hall everybody is nice everybody is respectful but it's not only in this hall it's even in the parking and one more request we have of course uh, when we are coming in let's try to put our shoes on the shoes racks the reason let me tell you because the carpet we have outside just outside the door people pray over there when this uh, hall gets full then people pray in uh, on the carpet as well so let's not try to put our shoes over there let's try to keep our shoes on the racks different projects are going on of course you can use different means to donate as i always says allah's works does not stop because i did not donate it allah allah's works keeps on going on it's me who would lose the opportunity whatever money i'll give 1 2 5 10 100 1000 10000 $10, dollars it's going to end it's going to be invested somewhere but the ajr will keep on going until probably the day of judgment when i'll be you know uh, awake again from my grave we have weekly adult quran understanding classes in english every sunday after maghrib for 20 minutes urdu every wednesday from 4:15 to about 40 minutes we have weekly quran halka that is on sunday after fajr again we read quran together and correct each other allah subhanahu wa taala says khairu khairukum khairukum man ta'allam al qur'ana wa 'allamahu that the best among you are those who learn the quran and teach it so alhamdulillah we are trying to do that ya khan muslimin always question yourself always question yourself that how much time have you taken out of your life of your day for allah subhanahu wa taala especially for the people who have time please if you want baraka in your life if you baraka in, if you want baraka in your health in your age in your family take time out for allah subhanahu wa taala even if you are losing 10 15 20 100 dollars those are not losing that is the donation of your time you are doing for allah subhanahu wa taala so don't take anything allah subhanahu wa taala values everything we do for him so don't think that if i'll lose my 2 hours i'm going to lose this much money it's not losing ya khan muslim it's the investment for the baraka otherwise you have seen people who would be working like machines normally I, yeah and and still would it, they wouldn't get anything or sufficient out of it if anybody would like to have any program in the masjid please contact brother amir after the uh, friday prayer inshallah he can he'll be able to help you and then at home as i always say please have discussion with children make it a habit don't argue discussion does not mean argue you do not have to put them on the corner talk to them just listen to what they have to say listen how they think 
your children, your kids, you know, even if they're elder, give them a chance to speak their heart out, even if you don't like it. Still, at least the, the good part is that you know that what they are thinking. So give them a chance to do that. And for the small kids, young kids, of course, don't forget, Muslim, they have mobiles and tabs in their hand, which is a door open to the outside world and everything is coming in. And the biggest of the fitna of everything is atheism, is a godless society. And there are a few more. I don't want to name them right now. Fajr prayer, please try to make at least one day for the Fajr prayer with your children nowadays, if possible. If not, still try your best to be here. Pray with your children so it becomes their habit. And all the children who can bring their parents, please do so. Last but not least, Ya Khan Muslimin, pray for the people who are sick, who are suffering, who are going through problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seek all the sick people, uh, heal all the sick people. Bless them with the best of the health blessings. Take away all their troubles and worries, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all those people who have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins, their mistakes, increase their good deeds, and accept their good deeds, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khilqa ijma'in, bi rahmatu ya rahmeen, wa akhuru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.